from verse 8 on. And then he asked Davi, saying, So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue for you shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all. So David went, he and the six hundred men who were with him, and came to the broke uh, Pesor, where those staying uh, stayed who were left behind. But David pursued he and four hundred men, for two hundred stayed behind, who were so weird, weird that where that they could not cross the brook, the brook. Bezer. There was a vision in, in which people seemed to have uh, great riches, and everybody looked to only to their hands, waiting for sure to receive something from that person. But the word that came from his mouth was, Seek my face. So we were instructed then to look towards his face. And it's very easy for us to look at the Lord and only wait for the blessings. Everybody wants blessings. Everybody wants to receive benefits. Everybody wants result. Everybody wants to receive grace from the Lord. But many times we make mistakes because we don't seek the Lord. Many times we miss the blessing from the Lord because we only want to see the hands of the Lord, only to see the things that He has to give us. And our Lord is rich, and He has pleasure in blessed men. But the commitment of God is, is with His servant. Lord doesn't have commitment with the unfaithful. He doesn't have any commitment with the world, the unfaithful. But the Lord has a great commitment with those who serve Him and serving with an open heart and waiting only for the salvation uh, that will come from the Lord Jesus Christ. The other things the Lord will give, it, give you. For sure, He has pleasure and blesses. But we are not here in the presence of the Lord. We are not here simply uh, seeking the miracle, seeking a miraculous sign or the operation of the Holy Spirit. We are here because the salvation of Jesus, the grace of Jesus for us is enough. And also there is the instruction that comes from the Lord, what the Lord says, His word, His instruction, what has been the doctrine, what has been the teaching of the Lord for our lives. And we're going to see that our experience with the Lord is an experience filled with trials. Our life, our salvation, Jesus, is filled with trials. You know why? Because the work of the Holy Spirit is known as the work of David. In David, the King David, he represents the person of the Lord Jesus. And if we look at uh, the kingdom of David, you will see that his kingdom was a kingdom filled with trials. David, he had to impose, he had to use force, he had to use the weapons 
to be able to be recognized by his people and by the nations that surrounded Jerusalem and surrounded Israel. That's why David is known as the king of strength. Because he had uh, uh, tri uh, struggles since he was a child. He had trials at home. He had trials with his people. He had uh, struggles with King Saul. He had struggles within him, his own soul, his within himself, with you know, his own flesh and his desires. David was a man that fought to be able to achieve what he was able to achieve. That's why David he represents the person of the Lord Jesus. In everything that he didn't see, he represents the Lord Jesus, because Jesus also had to fight for us. In the same way, when one day we came to the presence of the Lord, we are here today because we were victorious in our battles. We are here today because one day the love of God was able to reach us and we, were a we had to uh, face many troubles out there, had to overcome family, uh, Fate families, face friends, have to fight co-workers and myself, my my personal, my internal struggle. But the Lord is, has always given us strength. That's why we are here. We are here simply seeking the blessing of the Lord for our enrichment and on this earth. No, we are here because Jesus paid a high price price of blood he gave himself for us he let go eternity and came here faced everything for us and he was victorious in all things and we also have been victorious and after David came Sol Solomon which is the work of the Holy Spirit Solomon represents the Holy Spirit and today we're here the servant when he goes the past the first phase when he is victorious in it, he is able to achieve the spiritual government. And the Holy Spirit helps us, he convinces us, he brings us, gives us direction. He helps us to live a moment of sanctification, a, man, a moment of seeking the Lord, a moment in which the prayer for us is a preventive prayer. We not only pray because we are in the midst of a, a struggle. We, we pray before the, the trial because the Holy Spirit shows us what we are going to face. If you're serving of the Lord, you're faithful, you have intimacy with the Lord, the Holy Spirit reveals it to you what we are going to have to face in the future. And that's how the Lord works. He never lets His uh, uh, servant without any information about the future. If you have fellowship with the Lord, you are living your life in the presence of the Lord, you can be sure that the Lord is speaking with you. Because the voice of Jesus is a powerful voice. Because the voice of the Lord, when it speaks with men, it transforms hearts. We may want to hear or may not want to hear the voice of the Lord. But the voice of the Lord is being and the church of the Lord is being heard, is, is hearing the voice of the Lord. That's why the message is to, for us to seek His face because it's, that's where the, the word of power comes from. That's where the comfort, the consolation comes from. David was living a moment of great difficulty. David was coming from a battle in which he and his talents came to a city called Ziklag. And when they came to the city, they found the city completely destroyed by fire. The women and children have been taken away, captive. There was no more. Not even the David's family was was taken away. The word says that when David arrived there, the sadness was so great, the pain 
of the loss, the pain of what was had just happened, and he was unable to do anything. The Bible says that he cri they cried so much, they lost they lost their strength. They could no, not even cry anymore. That's how how great the desperation of David was, the pain and the sadness of David. The people there, they they blamed David. They wanted to stone David. David was found guilty for the things that had happened. And now David, he could have done many things. He could have gathered his uh, army, his men, and uh, and went go after them. But David, the Bible says that David is strengthened in the Lord. David, in the midst of this great trial he was going through, he went to pray to to the Lord and seek guidance from the Lord. And now, okay, David asked the Lord, Lord, can I go after these people? And the Lord said, go. So then David calls his men, his 600 men, 200 were not able to go. They were too tired. So David goes only with 400. The Bible tells us that he brought back everything that had been taken away. Their wives, children, everything that had been lost, David brought back through the victory once again another battle in the name of the Lord. Uh, brethren, it's interesting that 200 men were left behind because they were tired. Many say that, hey, hey this tiredness, wasn't it in part unfaithfulness? Maybe they were unfaithful for being left behind? No. Many times we have to discern who is really tired and who is being unfaithful to the Lord. And many times we have prayed to the Lord so that the Lord may give us this blessing, that the Lord may renew those that are tired. Because every one of us have the right to be tired. The trials are many. The attacks of the enemy are great. But if we allow the Lord fight in our behalf, we're going to be victorious in everything. The word says that they stayed in the river, the brook of Bezor. It, it means renewal. That's where they were renewed. The unfaithful, they don't stay in the brook of Bezor. Because this bro brook represents the house of the Lord. Here's a place where we're going to be strengthened by the Lord. Here's the place where we're going to find what we need. Rest in the Lord. Here's the place where our strength are being renewed. Here's the place where the Lord brings joy to our hearts. And interesting for us to know who is tired and who is being unfaithful. And many times we, not to point to hey, hey, maybe because the brother didn't come because he's tired or unfaithful. No, we need to look inside of ourselves and discern if many times what we're doing is because we're tired or because we're being unfaithful to the Lord. That's why David, when he understood that the 200 that remained there was because they needed to be renewed in the presence of the Lord. And David came back with the, with the people and the riches that he, they had been that they had brought back. They were also blessed. Everything that David brought, he shared with everyone, and they received their portions. So the Lord wants us to understand this: that we should not be here simply because of the blessing. For this life, we need to be here because the Lord has a blessing that's much greater than the material blessings. What the Lord has for us is a blessing that is eternal. So the renewal that is going to make us remain with the uh, King David and 
with the Lord Jesus. My brethren, tonight, the Lord wants us to have this understanding. We need to judge ourselves, look towards our own lives, to who we are, how we are acting, understand that if our tiredness is really tiredness because of the trials and battles, or if we are acting without faithfulness, or maybe because we are unfaithful to the Lord, or because we are denying or rejecting the blessing of the Lord, and allow the things of this world take control before our commitment with the Lord. That's why King David, when he comes back, he was also uh, reached to those men that were tired. He gave them the portion, divided with them everything that was recovered. Why? Because David understood that. It's good when the Lord looked to us and He doesn't find us lacking. Good is when the Lord, when we receive grace from the eyes of the Lord. Because if the Lord finds grace in us, we're going to be blessed. That's my burden tonight. I want to call each one of us to do this reflection. How are you doing? How is the group of assistants that you are taking care of? How are you doing? That? How is your call with the Lord? Are you zeal making and uh, being sellers for it? We all may be tired. If we came here tired, we will be leaving this place renewed in the presence of the Lord. Because this is the place where the Lord has reserved for us a great blessing. Amen. So we're going to take advantage of this moment of prayer. If you want a prayer, if you want from the part of the Lord a renewal, if you truly want to, to be connected with the Lord, the Lord has a blessing for you. That's what the Lord has shown. A branch is here about to be killed, uh, to die, it was cut and it was connected to a uh, uh, branch full of, of life and it, his life was renewed. The Lord wants to make a, an agreement, a covenant with us. But you need to accept it from the Lord. The instrument players and the, the praise group is going to sing a song. And we, if you want, we're going to pray to the Lord. And say, Lord, I want to receive a renewal from the part of the Lord. I want to pray for my family. We want to pray for that brother that has been the target of our prayer, that you may renew. We're going to do this tonight. Tonight's a night of prayer. David sought the Lord. He consulted with the Lord. And that's what had been learned from the part of the Lord. Our victory is based on prayer. And seeking the Lord. And to show to the Lord and expect from Him. Because He has control over all things. Now in prayer, there is going to be singing song.
Bless me in the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. I could ask someone here who wants to be renewed. Who needs a spiritual renewal tonight? Mm. Each one of us needs. It's not a shame to say that. We have the right to be tired. After the right to be tired, we cannot be unfaithful to the Lord. But when we enter here in the house of the Lord, in the brook of Bezor, we will be, our strength will be restored. We'll be living this place overflowing because the blessing of the Lord is in this place. That's why the Lord brought us here tonight. Not because we didn't have anything better to do. No. We came here because the Lord has a great blessing to each one of us. Amen. Let us stand up. We're going to have a word of glorification to the Lord. I give grace to you. Because that God of mercy. You have renewed your people. And praise the name because our soul has been renewed. You have strength to walk. The strength for us to walk has been renewed. And praise the name because everything that we want is to see the glory of the Lord. We're here not seeking riches of any human goods. We're here we want to see the act of the Holy Spirit. We praise your name because only you are God. Only you are worthy of all the praises. We praise you in the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Hello. Lord, receive each prayer has been made tonight. Those that have been made in a loud voice and also those that have been made instead of their hearts and silence oh, that only you could hear. That's why I ask the Lord that you may answer with power. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. children. Blessed are those. Blessed are, are you. I'm giving you uh, the better part, which is to be in your, my house here tonight. Since you, you have gone against your flesh, your spirit has been renewed. And now I restore the strength, your strength. I renew your forces. So tomorrow you will be producing twice as much. I tell my children that my hand has always been, it will be always upon you to bless you. I want to say also my servant, my, s my daughter, that one day a word that was given to you hurt your heart and has been creating trouble for you to continue on your walk. I have a blessing uh, to give you and you have not taken possession because of this problem. I'm now delivering you from that healing the wound of your heart and I tell you that that word that one day was given to you was my spirit and it was for your growth my children rejoice in my presence because I am the one who speaks to you um, Jehovah Jireh the God provider my children I, my peace I give you at this moment. Glory to God. Lord, we praise you. Okay, once again, it's a privilege to be able to hear a voice, to hear the instruction from the Lord. And I now we t ask you that you may take us home to our 
take us to our homes, that we may have a night rest in your presence, receive our adoration, the prayer that we is say in the name of Jesus. In your name we say that the wonderful grace of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of our, of our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation and gifts of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon us now and forever. Amen. The church may be seated. Our service is over. If you desire still a prayer, we are here at your disposal. And I want to remind you that Saturday morning the church will be open at 6 o'clock in the morning for our early dawn service. And group B, right? Group B. Saturday morning, it does not not prevent you, the whole church, from being present. Uh, I want to say peace of the Lord to everyone.